This is KGW News at Sunrise. We start this hour of sunrise in the gorge. Sunrise photographer Chad Dehart is in Hood River looking across the Columbia River where the Tunnel 5 fire continues to burn. The good news this morning is that fire has not spread in the last 24 hours. We do have the latest on the efforts to contain the blaze coming up here in just a minute. Plus. He pulled something out of his waistband and well, obviously it was a gun and it just everybody was looking around and just everybody jumped when it was time. That man is talking about an attempted robbery that customers stopped at a 7-Eleven store. The suspect is expected in court today and it turns out he's accused of targeting more than one store. Here's another live picture this morning. This one from Canby at the home of South Barlow Berries. You can do some you picking when <laughs> you're out there. They've got lots of berries that are ripe right now, ready to be picked, including those Marion berries. Rodney Hill, do you like Marion berries? Uh, I do. I like anything that you can put in a pie. Do you like raspberries? <laughs> I like anything you can put in a pie. Poison berries? Oh, you can put them in a pie. Okay. <laughs> they got them all there. We'll have more from South Barlow berries coming up a little bit later here on Sunrise. Yeah, the berry patch. Right? Perfect way to start off after the 4th of July weekend, maybe looking ahead to another thing to do next weekend, maybe, the berry patch? Uh, I guess so, yeah. Uh, big <laughs> weather stories. The heat advisory continues today, and also a developing story about our diminishing air quality. That's wildfire haze. You can see it from the Wells Fargo camera right there. We're at 65 degrees. And I do want to alert you if you have respiratory uh, health issues where this sort of thing, deteriorating air quality is an issue for you, then uh, please plan your day accordingly. It's, it's quite bad up around Seattle. Unhealthy to healthy, unhealthy air for many of the Puget Sound areas. And then there's one unhealthy reporting site near PDX, otherwise a mix of moderate to good between Portland and Vancouver this morning. All right, 65 right now. Here come the hot temperatures. Day two, 84 at noon, projecting 98 the high. Yesterday it was 96, and today's record for to the date is 96, which I think will equal or break. Here's Chris McGinnis. Wow, hot fifth. All right, let's go ahead and get you out the door right now. The uh, road's locally in pretty good shape. Of course, a reminder, through the Columbia River Gorge on the Washington side, SR14 closed for the Tunnel 5 firefighting efforts, and that closure has shifted a bit uh, to the east now from mile post 56 to 65, which is basically right at uh, the Hood River Bridge. Quick look at the drive. Uh, Highway 26 out near Tannis, born wide open on that side of town, and the drive through Wilsonville looks pretty good on I-5 as well. Guys, no other uh, crash there's no unexpected delays just yet. All right, Chris, thank you for that update. We do have some breaking news to cover as well as we start the five o'clock hour of sunrise. Portland police say a man was shot and killed in a shooting in Northeast Portland's Argay Terrace neighborhood. Officers got a call about a shooting at Northeast 131st and Prescott just before one o'clock this morning. They still haven't told us anything about the man who died. They also haven't made any arrests. Anyone with information about this is asked to call Portland police. And we are continuing to track the Tunnel 5 fire burning in Skamania County this morning in the Columbia River Gorge. What you're looking at is a live look. You can see the hot spots, the flames, the smoke too. This is thanks to our photographer who's there, Chad DeHart in Hood River. That fire sparked early Sunday west of White Salmon, Washington, near the community of Underwood. Of course, this has been our lead story all week long so far. The good news this morning, two pieces. It appears that the fire has not destroyed any other homes. It also looks like it hasn't grown substantially, at least here in the last 24 hours. Crews say the lack of wind has definitely helped them contain this fire. As you can see on your screen, a stretch of SR 14 there on the Washington side of the gorge continues to remain closed. That closure will stay in place indefinitely. Now, fire crews in Longview have had a pretty busy 4th of July. They responded to 13 fires that they say were sparked by fireworks last night. No businesses or homes were lost, but some were damaged. The most serious situation happened just after midnight on 23rd Avenue. Firefighters say there were reports of an explosion and a fire in a garage. When they arrived, they found a man in critical condition. Crews were able to put out the fire. Investigators at this point are looking into the cause. Just north of Olympia and about an hour southwest of Seattle, firefighters are battling a fire that's forced dozens of people from their homes. The McEwen fire is burning near the town of Shelton. That's in Mason County. It started yesterday afternoon and at this point has burned an estimated 250 acres. It's also 0% contained. At last check, over 200 homes have been ordered to evacuate. 
Right now, there are new burn bans in place because of high fire danger due to the hot and dry conditions. In Marion County, all agricultural and slash burns that are meant to clear land, plus all recreational fires and backyard burns are banned. That is with the exception of gas and charcoal grills. And in Cowlitz County, a ban on all outdoor burning took effect at midnight. All burn permits are rescinded. Small recreational fires, meaning smaller than nine square feet, are still okay on private property, but it must be properly monitored and contained within a ringed burn pit. The ban runs at least until the end of September. We'll of course continue to keep tabs on any new burn bans that arise, as well as wildfires already burning in the area, both online and here on air. We'll also be checking in with our crew at the Tunnel 5 fire throughout the morning here on Sunrise. It just all happened all at once. It was so quick. A man is expected in court today after robbing a convenience store twice and attempting to rob another one just a few hours later. So the one he tried to rob twice was the 7-Eleven on Northeast Sandy and 82nd. This happened Sunday morning, and this is the stolen gun that Portland police say he used to hold up customers. Court documents say 40-year-old Daniel Jones demanded money. Customers, though, wrestled him to the ground. One man we talked to who wanted to remain anonymous watched everything unfold from outside the store. He pulled something out of his waistband and well, obviously it was a gun and it just everybody was looking around and just everybody jumped when it was time. Police say the gun did go off. Thankfully, though, no one was hurt. Just hours before this incident, police say Jones robbed another 7-Eleven two times, taking a beer, cigarettes and about $300 in cash. He's now booked in the Multnomah County Detention Center on several charges, including robbery and unlawful use of a weapon. Again, he's expected in court later this morning. And as promised, we're getting another shot of the berry patch this morning. We're talking about South Barlow berries in Canby. These, what you're looking at, are Columbia Giants. I am told <laughs> they you. were developed yeah. by Oregon State University. They've been growing and selling berries. This patch has been since 1997. It is family owned and operated. Look at that thing. That's huge. It is. That's a, uh, that's a whole breakfast right there. In the Have day. you ever had a Columbia Giant? I've no, never. I've never heard of one. Yeah, actually. me neither. So anyway, one more reason to go to this patch. <laughs> try that one out. They've got blackberries, raspberries, marionberries, boysenberries. You name it. It's all you pick. They've also got jams, raw honey available too. Um, you can see all the information there on your screen. Typically, they're open Monday through Saturday, 9 to 5 p.m. This Friday, though, FYI, they are closed for a private event. For any more information, you can head to South barlowberries.com Let's say we crash that private event. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> I, I'm, not a, uh, I'm not a berry expert. In fact, uh, Nina, when she used to anchor the show, used to make fun of the way I say the word berry. I don't know. Bear, it's a little do it's, I say it's funny? different. Berry? You say berry it's a versus berry. Thing. Here's berry. what I know. All those <laughs> ones we haven't really heard of before. Yes, sir. Uh, there's the sea star. Uh, there's the one that you call the, the giant. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The giant. Columbia. The Columbia giant. giant, I think yeah. it was. They're all variations of a blackberry. They are. Okay. Do you, if you like blackberry, yes. you're sure to like these other variations. I like I blackberries. Think. Um, thank you for that in-depth berry report, Mr. Yeah. Carney. Well, what do you want from us, Rod? What do, you, <laughs> what do you want more on the hard news we had today going into the weather? Let's get to the weather, man. <laughs> How do you like berries? I'm not trying to run away from the topic. Uh, all right. Uh, heat advisory day two. Um, I don't think it's a slam dunk that the weather service drops a heat advisory after today, but right now it's up through 11 o'clock and we tonight and we will be looking at temperatures cooling off closer to 90 tomorrow. So some good news there. The red flag warning is the red color that is still in play for high fire danger as well. OK, what are we doing today? Albany to Vancouver up by five where the heat advisory is in play for the valley. Um, 96 to as hot as 100 degrees today. Um, there could be a 100 degree spot yesterday. Most of us stopped at 96. Vancouver had 95, which tied the record. Portland and Salem reached at 96. No records. Coast range Cascade Foothills also in the heat advisory, but not as toasty. More like 92 to 95 degrees expected today. It's also going to be noticeably hotter out in the gorge. Some of you folks around Hood River, for example, were 93, 94 yesterday. Today, more like 97. OK, these are current temperatures. Um, 52 in Astoria, nice weather at the beach. Uh, some early fog, low clouds. We'll look for otherwise more sun is coming. Astoria made it up into the low 80s yesterday. Currently uh, 62 in Salem, 58 degrees out in Pendleton. 
Uh, the forecast is all about the numbers with the hot weather here. Cascade Locks, Hood River 97, 97. Look at the Dow's 101 degrees. And a reminder here in Oregon, once we hit 100 degrees or better, supposed to have the work crews uh, come indoors. So uh, three o'clock on is when that could be around 100 degrees out in Wasco County. Areas of smoke in the gorge, obviously winds pretty light today. We reported on that being part of the good news part of the, the firefighters battling that tunnel five blaze northeast five to 15. And then in the valley again, most of us were 96 yesterday. Today we'll try to get up well, not try, but I think we'll be in the upper 90s in Salem, 98 degrees. I have Vancouver at 98. Longview 93, and then here's the seven day forecast. Tomorrow 93, so there's the cool off from today's 98, and then by Friday we're in the 80s, and I have us in the 80s throughout the weekend, and that is your forecast. Today is also a good energy day, Rod. Take a look at this. Because this insect has the potential to go through 95% of our ash trees within as little as 10 years. What insect is he talking about? He's talking about the insect known as the emerald ash borer. We saw huh. a quick picture of yeah. it there a moment ago. Apparently, one of the only ways to get rid of it is to burn them out. But in today's KGW Good Energy segment, we're gonna talk about the more eco-friendly method that Oregon is testing to try to get rid of this pest. Again, the details after this.